with our new year, we've had one request that keeps getting repeated. And so I'm going to do this today. It's on the French dart. It's not that it's difficult. It's just different. And so I think there's just a learning curve that's not there. We've done a French dart DVD. I mean, we've done a French dart video. And so you get the basics. But just the request was simply that they couldn't see close up. So today, close up. We're going to move the camera in. We're going to do it right on the pattern so that you can see all the work that I'm doing. Let's begin. So here we are close up. This is pattern number 1819. This is Sheila's jacket, but that doesn't make any difference. What matters is we have a dart here. And for many of you, what you need to do is to go from one size at the top to a different size at the bottom. I'm actually going to kind of make this, I'm going to show you both ways, but I'm going to make this really easy. You know, sometimes they say in teaching, you learn new and better ways and, and things get easier and easier. And that's really true. But here, for instance, if I was going to go with the one up here and the four down at the bottom, I could actually make all my graduations before I ever even get to the French dart because the French darts in the lower side seam. So by the time I was here and I transferred and went down over to here, and you can do that with your French curve. So find the exact shaping that it is. And when a French curve changes, it usually changes about the waist area. And so you notice it goes in and then it flips out to where the hip is. So those are, you know, but again, you can just take it from here, going to two, going to three, going to four, and all your changes are actually made before you even get into the French dart, and then just follow the lines for where this French dart starts. So the four would go up here, and then when you came down, you'd still be on the four. So all the transferring takes place before the dart even, before it even worries before it even begins. And you can start with the one here. Then of course, by the time you're here, you go to the four and then follow those four lines. But let's just say specifically, you don't want to do that. And let's just say you want to use the one dart, but you want to use it at the line. You want to use the size one dart, but you want to bring it out to the size four. So I'm just throwing out different variables so that you can we can come up with different things. What we know about this French dart is that these are actually cut lines, not stitch lines. And this is again meant to be an addition to what we've done in the past, not in place of. So what we know the French dart is a combination between the bust dart and the waist dart. It's been combined into a dart. So it's a fairly large dart because they don't want to leave all that back there. They actually cut the dart out and then add seam allowance. So where these seam allowances cross just means that there's not enough seam allowance in here to come all the way up to where the dart should end, should where it should be stitched. So if I'm cutting and I've got a larger dart, this is only, this is a D cup, but let's say I've just got a, a different pattern and it's closer to the bus point and I don't want to sew that far up, I can just back it off. I can just bring it back somewhere in here and fill in the tissue. And that's why muslins are always good. At least one, so I get the dart right, so I get everything in place. At least one muslin is a good thing with a French dart. So what I want to show you today, I'm actually going to cut out, or I, I really, before I even cut out, I want to show you the folding. If I take then, with a seam allowance, and take the size 4 dart, and again, I'm going to take away that seam allowance, and sew it to the size 4 line, then what you see is that the, the lines, I'm going to leave that here because this paper keeps curling up, the lines become straight. They're just straight. I mean, you know, they're not straight, but they're in line with. So by the time I stitch that dart, the lines come all back together. So now let's say I'm going to stitch the one dart. So I'm going to take the size one. I'm going to take away the seam allowance. And I'm going to, and, and it, I guess it doesn't matter in this case. By the time you close one of them up, they're all going to be closed up. So I'm using the size one dart in this case. Then what I'm doing is I'm cutting it away on a size four. So you can see there that that's the four. Again, with this, it just, you guys, as I do this, it just becomes simpler and simpler. There's really no transference. All you have to do 
is transfer in here before the dart comes into play and then just use whatever dart works best for you. It wouldn't even matter if you went from this dart over to this dart, if you made that line a little more angled. And I think you probably suspect that, you just need permission. So the angle of that dart makes absolutely no difference at all. So where you start here is the circumference, of course, but when you end there, it just makes it really simple. So again, these are cut lines. So that means they include seam allowance. In our patterns, they include three inch seam allowance. Do all your transferring in here, and maybe you just couldn't see that before in another pattern, so I just want to make it clear. Do all the changing in here. By the time you get to the French dart, it's already done. And then again, just pick it up at the bottom. And you can change sizes in through here. It's just not gonna make a difference. The goal is to make your sewing faster and easier, not more complicated, so this is really why we wanted to clarify this. So simple, quick, Happy New Year. And what you're going to do now is go sew, because this video just didn't take a long time. All right, and we'll see you next time. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns.